Hey everybody, Dr. Jason Barker with the Natural Athletes Clinic and this is part two of our video series on anemia in athletes. So in the first video I talked about three main groups of people who are susceptible to iron deficiency anemia and that's women of reproductive age because they lose blood monthly. Second are vegans and vegetarians just because they typically don't eat foods that are as rich in iron as other foods are like animal products. And the third are endurance athletes. So there's a couple reasons why endurance athletes are prone to iron deficiency anemia. The first one is sweats. You actually can lose iron in your sweat. It's not a whole lot, but it is something that can be a contributory factor over time. A little bit of iron is lost along with the other electrolytes. Nobody's gonna get anemic from just sweating, but it is one avenue by which you lose iron. So if you're already low, that can add up. Little things like that can add up. Second big area is the GI tract, so the gastrointestinal system. Um, what happens is when we're exercising, all of that blood kind of leaves the core of the body, doesn't want to sit around and digest the food, it wants to go out and help the muscles work and also help dissipate heat. So when that happens, there's a relative lack of blood in that area and the organs actually can get irritated from all the jostling and the rubbing and the friction. They actually do move around slightly and the you know, repetitive motion and things like that, the organs can rub together. You can get tissue erosions and you can get inflammation from that. You can get gastritis, that's uh, inflammation in the stomach and you'll, there, there's actually a pretty good blood loss from things like that. So that's one area. And then the second is when not necessarily, you know, this isn't, these drugs don't cause anemia specifically, but taking NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, you know, the pain relievers like that, those have a real nasty side effect of making your GI tract bleed. So if you're somebody who uses these medicines regularly, or if you're somebody who wants to take a, a preventive dose before a, a long run or maybe right after, you're going to make some bleeding going happen in your stomach and your GI tract. So that's um, obviously not a good thing, and we wanna try and get you away from those type of medications. Uh, the third area is in the urine. So a similar kind of thing is in the GI tract is where the blood supply kind of goes out away from the core of the body and it can kind of, um, leave a shortage in the kidneys there. And so this is stressful on the kidneys and also on the bladder too. So sometimes you'll see blood in the urine after a long run or something like that. And of course, that's never a good thing. If you ever do see blood in the urine, you need to get that checked out quickly. And then the fourth area is called exercise-induced hemolysis. So that's a fancy way of saying red blood cells get destroyed by exercise. And then the biggest group who is most susceptible to this are runners, of course. And what happens is as that blood flows through the feet with all that repetitive strike force from the feet on the ground, it actually crushes and destroys the red blood cells. So this isn't something that's going to happen to somebody who's running three miles a day. This is you know, marathoners, ultra runners, people who do a lot of running. All that repetitive pounding can actually destroy those red blood cells. Um, runners aren't the only people who you see this in. It's been documented in swimmers, uh, weightlifters, and even rowers. Um, not as much in that group. Obviously runners do a lot more striking and pounding on their body than maybe the other groups do. So runners are most susceptible for, for this, uh, that type of anemia. So there's four different ways that endurance athletes can become deficient in iron away from diet and away from being female. So hopefully this will give you a little bit more insight and understanding into different types of anemia and we'll talk about how to diagnose and treat it in the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.